very much, Peter. And we now proceed to the discussion session of this defense. And the first opponent to discuss the thesis is uh, Mikey Sinclair, please. Do you want us to come up? Yes, please. Yes. It's easier for people to follow you. And Should we take a mic? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, Peter, for a wonderful summary of your work and two elegant, very elegant uh, illustrations and, and the movie at the end. I want to just say a few words before I start my, my, my questions. It was a great pleasure and, and, and honor, actually, to read a body of work of, in this case, Peter Monk, um, over quite a few, or a couple of decades anyway, of, of his research. And, uh, both of us characterized Peter as a scientist scientist. What I mean by that was he had the kind of the rigor that one expects of a scientist of everything was evidence-based. Um, clear uh, articulation of the problem, uh, honest treatment of the literature, and then fitting his results into um, the, uh, the broader context of the, of the study. And I think this is relatively rare in, in, in science these days. There tends to be uh, that you sort of search for, or you see in a stronger light, uh, evidence that supports your own hypothesis. But uh, Peter is certainly not in that camp, so uh, he's, a, he's a great scientist. I'm going to start with the, with the questions that are a bit more conceptual and historical to put your work uh, into the place of, of, of history. Um, so I'm going to, it's almost like trivia of pursuits, I'm going to ask some questions about the uh, uh, history of development of uh, issues in larval ecology, and then ask Peter to um, uh, comment on them. So, and then we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so first of all, uh, the Migration Committee of Committee A uh, of, of ICES, which is kind of a nice time to look at it, because it's just a centenary since Short's great uh, publication of uh, 1914. It's just passed us uh, recently. But anyway, Peter, the Migration Committee, um, what questions were being asked, and why was the committee called the Migration Committee, and what were the major discoveries of Committee A or the Migration Committee, and particularly the role of fish larvae in it? So the role of fish larvae in Committee A, and what do you think they achieved? Yeah, but the uh, I have. <laughs> But something about that, that uh, it was interesting that this hundred years ago there was a kind of what I also call in my own thesis a kind of golden age of of, of larval research, and that was because uh, in fact there was a mass lots of things going on there in the early century because of uh, well you know Einstein and everything really flourished, and and that time it was also be the way that that. Uh, Science has in fisheries has improved very much and kind of coming to a kind of paradigm shift. Uh, and, and therefore, the ISIS has got the families, and then they sit down in this migration committee. They have to solve the question of where do the fish go? At that time, it seems quite evident now, but, but, but uh, at that time, we didn't know that they had this. And uh, sometimes, some years, uh, the fishermen caught a lot of fish, and then suddenly, next year, there was nothing to fish. So where did they go? Uh, and, and therefore they sit down with the migration committee. And then it was because they said there was no hypothesis from 50 years earlier, or how well, uh, much earlier it was, but, but then that, that, that it might that probably migrated to the north, because they didn't find them in the temple, as in the, the North Sea waters or something. So, so they might probably gone far away. So that was a migration that migrated to the north. But there was some skeptical about that. Uh, there were some indications, and therefore they sit down the committee. And then, yeah, is that well, where do we go from there? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what were the oh, the seaweeds? Yeah, yeah, the fish larvae and sort of the contributions of Schmidt and Hjort. Yeah, 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 the chief. Yeah, yeah, that was then. Then, then we have many of these uh, stars, uh, really famous 
uh, scientists Peterson, Schmidt, uh, York, uh, coming up at that time. And that was not, they were so uh, stimulated by, by, the, by the work they had together in, in that book, I suppose. Uh, so so the, the benefits of the achievements from one uh, of these uh, was then backed by achievements from the other, and they supplemented each other. Uh, very good. And then, okay, what they achieved was to really to specify that it has something to do with fish larvae. That it was, that it was the, the uh, variable recruitment to the stock that made it shift in size. It didn't move, but simply the, the fewer recruitments, the fewer small fish coming in, the less uh, will be to fish uh, in a given year. Uh, so, basically, the uh, Committee A came up with the uh, okay, so the one thing that I sort of saw missing in, in reading your, your literature was the concept of populations. So, and Yorts would say uh, with the committee uh, in, in his 1914 paper was the new problem was not looking at fluctuations of population, I'm sorry, of, of uh, abundance of the species, but fluctuations in your classes of populations. Right. Now, where does your, uh, where does your sort of work, aggregate work, fit into the population concept? Or do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, but how do you uh, explain that? Uh, that the population is, as a, I think the other way around, is something I talked about in the last part, because I think that there's very much focus now in understanding the population concept. That, that even at that time, it was the population concept that was was, uh, I don't know whether it's being revised, but it's kind of really much more, more details on that now, and a great understanding now these days. So would you um, make any comments on the relationship between uh, fish larval distributions and geographic space? Is that a, a big component of, of uh, say, Schmidt's contribution? Uh, Yeah, I don't know, but, but it's to my own feeling, yes, but I can't remember where the split was. But, but surely that the fish line is, is so, so, that's also your own uh, work of retention, so, so that, that the population is starting, so to say, with the fish line. What you say, they even have habitat to, let, to, to, to fish line, if, if the habitat has a given, given uh, condition of, of drift and dispersion, and, then, then the population can be established. Just, uh, we don't want to go too far back in history, but so to finish up with the sort of Committee A and, 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 and Hewart, um, could you uh, summarize his two hypotheses for recruitment variability? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, 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 that we have the first one is the Christian period hypothesis. And you will notice that I said there's no Christian phase, so in some way I approached it that a little. Uh, but okay, as, at least as he is in the previous, then he uh, George uh, proposed that it might be, ex especially in the very first uh, days of early life of the larvae, that is very critical. And that is really what determines how many will be left in the end. That, 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 that because they are so, so uh, at the mercy of a hostile world coming out of the dock, uh, out of the egg, and, 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 and having to establish feeding. So, so that should be a special critical phase. And that's really cited very much in in the lab of the literature, I'm not personally so much fond of that in the sense that, that uh, what I try to argue in my thesis is that, that it is to be understood in a much more complex way. The other hypothesis, which is that more according to, to our thoughts, is that that, 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 that it might also be the, uh, something happening in the, the further on, so to say, by, by how, how are they drifting, uh, drifting uh, from, from a given area to another area. Is that is that um, uh, the conditions within that area of distribution is that, is that uh, sufficient uh, quality to them? So the three shops is sort of critical period and the three shops I'll come back to some of that in a minute, but... I know that you've been asked about the drift, whether we... Yeah. You want to drift the drift there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to jump forward a little bit in the history of, of ideas. Um, again, sort of what questions were being asked and we go to the migration triangle yeah. of Hart and Jones in the, in the 1960s. Um, I hope I get this in a, in a sensible way, but 
and the migration triangle uh, from a larval perspective, what was being proposed by Hart and Jones? Yeah, I don't know that there's a very uh, you know, simple way that it has to drift from spawning areas to those uh, areas. <coughs> that's it, right? It's a part of the one side of the triangle. So when you look at your aggregate work on larval distributions, um, just to repeat what you said, I guess you're saying that fish spawn in relationship to a residual circulation that takes the larvae to a juvenile area. That's yeah, that's hard to jump. I think we have also to be careful about the situation. I would say frontal case, but I would stick to because it can be a little complex to how how to define that. So my point is that, that it is the current that is related to the front which is transport. And that might also be where we are a little I'm not sure whether we hundred percent agree about this because you propose that it is uh, that it is a kind of that's very dangerous. But as I see it, when they are entering the the, uh, the front will get, they have sufficient drift. So I can, I can help John, both to have the frontal retention and also the drift within one. So we, we, are you concluding yes. then that your aggregate body of work does not support the migration triangle uh, hypothesis? Mm, not as such. As it is part of it, but as it's something correct as we find, as it's also in some way as we Define the spawning area and nursery area, and then, okay, they will be there and coming from there in some way. So they're not taking the area, they are drifting to there. So, so, so in that sense, but, but it has to be understood in a much more uh, uh, not complicated, but kind of uh, uh, related to, to actual, actual uh, uh, findings of, of, of hydrography. That's also my, what I really, uh, also in relation to to the East story, that in some way pe people are using too primitive an interpretation of photography. Yeah. But we need to dig into more into that. And even photographers, they also use kind of models that doesn't really doesn't really uh, incorporate the actual work for the for the lab. They have big models and so on, but what is going on to the lab is, is much more narrow and especially when we see it. Uh, it's very much talk about front, but it is a reality of these physical structures. They both have very specific hydrography and have a very specific approach to the lab, right? So, they have two things that are So, has our, uh, our understanding of, of uh, circulation features, I just touched on this, when Aaron Jones wrote his synthesis in the 60s, there was a certain perspective on, on circulation, let's say, of the North Sea. Um, how has that changed in what we might see as our, our modern day um, interpretation of the oceanographic features of the North Sea and, and how would that link into your larval uh, uh, focus? Hope that yeah, 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 I see, but I'm not so, uh, so it's, it's slowly moving, so to say. I, I, I'm surprised about people. <laughs> I don't know if it's out of the hydrographers. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but because because still, it's many years since we Mike is here somewhere that, that we we, uh, we looked into this uh, whether we could embed some of the frontal features in the standard understanding of North Sea hydrography, and still very slowly moving to whether this can be that's embedded into it. So it's progressing, but it's not really there yet. Okay, we're going to move on now. We're coming closer to the future, to the present. Um, Cushing's match mismatch hypothesis. Um, I think you probably covered this uh, well anyway. But what question was uh, was was uh, Cushing addressing? And again, how does your aggregate work um, fit into the validity uh, or the support for the match mismatch hypothesis or not? First, if you yeah, tell us, the first tell the audience what he was addressing first, yeah. and then you can say whether your evidence supports it or not. Yeah, but it is, um, he addressed that, 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 that the critical period, so to say, could be later in the life, but it could be when it, 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 it was going to feed, or it was started off feeding, then uh, whether it matched uh, to the production of food. 
uh, we have this that the, in the tempered water we have this cycle that, 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 that production is starting up in the spring and then we start up production of, of, of algae and then the, 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 the cover crops start in uh, lay eggs and we have the downland. So we're growing up the uh, larger through plankton population and that has to be matched is his proposal. That, 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 that we have the spawning of the fish, larva coming out, then there will be a peak in in, in, in zooplankton uh, abundances, and then uh, this has to match whether they come too early or too late, then pull up. Uh, that's a popular way. And then I think that's also kind of what is in the simple interpretation, and I'm not really fond of all these citations that has been of this. Uh, there has been more simple criticism that whether he really thought about the zooplankton production or whether it was more healthy and so on. But, but, but in general, I think again, the problem with these, they can, they can strengthen the mind, so to say, but on the other hand, they cannot be misleading to, to, to uh, doing it too simple. That's not so more, more opportunity, right? So, so when you also sort of say that, okay, uh, it can be problematic with these high thesis that they uh, simplify things too much, right? It's good to have some kind of, kind of uh, starting point, but, but I think it's too simple. Um. I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your research, I think, you showed some of it um, uh, did indicate that the survivors were the faster growing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But I think the spatial, as a, this is more kind of temporal aspect, right? And proposing that, well, it's really, well, we don't mean uh, the 14th of April. Then. But, but I think it's more spatial. Well, where are you in space? Yeah. Okay, now we're getting tricky for me because. Member vagrant hypothesis, uh, um, which is I wrote in '88. Uh, oh, that's a good hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think questions are meant to bring up their own work, but here we go. Um, okay, first of all, what general questions were being addressed, and does your work um, tend to support or not? What are the weaknesses? I don't know. Oh, you pick those. You pick them. Oh, yeah. Some of the weaknesses. Now, I understand. I think it's a, you made a great point. Uh, job there, introducing there by, 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 by also linking very much into evolution and, and into the population aspects and really trying to talk. And I, I really uh, think that much, as you say, the member, the member vagrant is something that either you can be a member or you can't. So, so are you in or are you out? And that is mostly meant kind of physically, can you stay in this given population? That was this this uh, habitat I illustrated, so are you lucky that you hit that habitat that was affording sufficient of your demands? Um, and then uh, the other, okay, and then, then this is necessary not only to the individual but also to the population. If nobody really has to stick together in this open sea, you can disperse, you, you might live, but what's, what's all about if you don't together with all your companions? Then you can establish another life of your. So, so, so therefore, therefore uh, it, it's necessary to be kept together as a population. Cool. Lots, of interesting, that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of interesting things in your, uh, in your papers and, and, and the thesis. Um, one thing that intrigued me was the spatial pattern of well, different categories of fronts and relationship between bottom spawners versus pelagic spawners. Yeah. Um, like, well, we all, I should let you elaborate on it, but did you see in your comparative approach, did you see anything in your categories of fronts and pelagic spawners versus bottom spawners in terms of patterns that emerge from that? No. I would say, say that, that, that it is a... Um, the distinguish uh, the thing is to be distinguished otherwise. Uh, as a point there is I don't know whether you uh, so partial spawn or simply the immersive spawn. Yeah, it's but spawners that, that spawn attaching their eggs to the bottom yeah, that's it. versus yeah, so, yeah, fish yeah, that yeah. do in the uh, water column. I don't know the answer. Of course it's likely it will some ways be different, but on the other hand uh, it's it is uh, it's not that obvious that it should be some but of course, they need to they have this extra, extra thing, they need to charge for it to, to spawn. Uh, but, but besides that, I uh, think the general aftermath is the same. I should 
That's the one thing I was very excited again to read this material because you've taken fronts to a whole other level that the fronts in your uh, interpretation are universal phenomena right. for uh, spawning in a, in a multitude of fishes, different types of fronts of different types of species. Um, is, it, is it naive to say why? Why would fronts be such a significant part of the life history of so many different fish? You know, it might even be the, the thing that, that, that established why so many species of fish. So it might be, be the really of, of high level. I think that, that if the fish uh, have found out this, this uh, strategy, spawning these uh, very tiny eggs, and then going kind of to the merge of the big open sea. In this case, we are still restricted to our strategies, but mostly we talk about the open sea here. How to cope with that? We go to find some the less dispersion with, with viability that makes it okay. This can be different from that, else it can be a given species. If, if this is not different from that, okay, where do I find a lot of viability? Where do I find the ability to be uh, constrained, stay there, not dispersed into another work man or no bankers here. So, so just back to this um, pelagic spawner versus benthic spawners, the, 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 what I sort of noted was that, uh, uh, maybe it's an obvious thing, but bottom spawners would only spawn in fronts that are spatially fixed. Yeah. Where pelagic spawners use all the other types of fronts yeah. that move around. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's, it's a simple observation, but it would yeah. then yeah. suggest again this, the, the structure itself. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's because this, that's yeah. this extra thing, as you have the front, okay, you should also have this, this uh, possibility of, of uh, attaching something to, to attach it. So they have a restriction more than the other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I move on now to the uh, niche theory, or your the, the niche, niche theory that yeah. you're, you're uh, uh, proposing is is a good way for us to, uh, I guess, address issues that we uh, have difficulty understanding. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, where do you see the niche concept leading to new insights into uh, larval ecology of fish? Yeah, I mean, I've only presented as a kind of simple approach, as a kind of way to think. And then it is because when I say to people, okay, it's very complicated, and there's really so many things you can't do, this uh, is important, this is important. Then I feel this can, we can, we can condense things, really also because some, often people confuse the niche and the habitat. And it's very to, to define here, we put aside all the demands. Here we need to be in this area, need these little needs of the larvae or the given, given, given species or given individual. And then where can this be, uh, where can this be, uh, uh, also found, found in, in, in the real world. And just, just okay, split that as well. Then we can, then we have improved our structure. But it's very simple, it's not that I have invented some math thing, but but, but I think that is a good way to, to approach things. And then you can define it, and especially I think this, that, that it is also kind of way to express that it is a physical habitat thing that is a thing. And okay, people will get confused by, by the abilities of the larvae, but okay, we still have the physics. Where, where do we find them? So it, it, it's, it's nice to have a kind of a, a real physical space. Uh, just following on from that, did you see a role for Predicting the effects of, uh, of climate change or climate variability uh, using the niche concept for for fish. Yeah, it would be then that then that, that, that then one of the as a, the, the niche demands it might be that they're difficult to to fulfill a that can would possibly shrink because they are mostly adapted to a given set of conditions, right? Then we have to change. How slowly can we change? Other species can move in. They have a they have another niche uh, niche and another niche that that can be fulfilled in another area. So so yes. So so looking looking backwards too at the uh, 
then I'm just thinking as I speak here, uh, we know that the, uh, say, ten, four to 10,000 years ago, the whole of the North Sea uh, was a different configuration. In fact, uh, you might know more than I do what it looked like. But um, the circulation changes through the last glaciation. Presumably, all of the patterns that we see today in terms of frontal features are new features. Yeah. So, at a time scale of a thousand years anyway, it appears that species can inhabit totally new areas. So, since right. us, I think I'm just out of the moment. That's, that's, that's also what the habitat is changing. Bruce, now what's right? The habitat is changing when you see, okay, there's another habitat next year, but also the the, uh, the changes we see uh, presently just for a 10 year period while this, this, uh, uh, this changing very much then, then okay, it's because, because the, the habitat or the village is less saline water. So the simple example is, uh, is, the, uh, is the one with the salinity in the ball shape. Okay, this is the kind of habitat that needs for the crop because it's really a, the extension of what it can, how it can stretch its niche demand, and then, then, then okay, uh, <coughs> that is not really full of up. So the is not sufficient. Okay, no possibly no habitat any longer. I mean, it seems to me it's a very uh, rich conceptual approach. The definition of the niche is is well done, and then we have um, the ability to, and, and then habitats associated with that niche. Yeah. are well defined. We, given our, our modeling tools, um, uh, we should be able to make interesting predictions about future patterns or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go on here. Uh, duration of the larval phase um, varies considerably for some species, herring in particular. So some herring uh, larval stages are uh, the same species, are uh, relatively short, and some are very long. Um, so you have a range, I think, from two months to nine months in the traditional yeah. larval phase for the same species. Yeah, maybe not the window. Well, so it? then, um, so you have this wide uh, range of growth at the larval stage. Uh, between uh, populations of the same species. Um, so does this infer that membership um, sort of trumps energetics processes? No, I don't see any change. How, I don't understand really what you mean. Well, basically, uh, I'm sort of arguing that um, for herring at least, there are all these different spawning locations associated with different fronts. Fronts uh, seem uh, to be uh, the, the key parameter. Oh, in, in every case, even how long it is the, the, yeah. the duration? Always about this or something. Fronts to do with the very beginning, right? It's mostly a question of the overwintering period, which makes it the last stage, yeah. the prolonging that. Which, but to my feeling, it doesn't. I think, I think that okay, I need a front. I, I don't care whether I need to then stay over winter. Okay, so so that is a minor thing to to start out life in a good way in the front. But it sort of suggests that a, a fish can deal with the energetics issues yeah. in a range of ways, but cannot deal with lack of frontal structure. Yes, maybe. And that's an interesting uh, observation, yeah. if it's true. That's a proposal, or you call it an idea. OK. How am I doing time-wise here? Chair, how much? Are you okay, time-wise? Yes. yes. Yeah. I thought we would uh, challenge me on this thrift thing. I can't. I don't have to much more to go here. Um, more of a, a, a um, technology and tools available for the future. But uh, do you support the concept of phylopatry in uh, fish populations? Well, eels, for example. Uh, and well, let's go to salmon. Do you, do you accept phytopatry in salmon? So what percentage of a salmon would come back to the same river uh, approximately? 
think it's over 95%. So it's well accepted that you have phyllopatry in, in rivers, but do we have phyllopatry in the open ocean? <laughs> okay, do we have phyllopatry for eels? No, it doesn't have potential need for us. Of course, we have the pan mythic population, which seems to indicate that there's us already. Then I have a pan mythic thing if it's if it's, if it's really uh, finds uh, other areas there. But, but still, uh, still, it might be that they, they have some strength in that. But there's some, still something we don't really know about that. So, where I'm taking you with this is we have phyllopatry in salmon. Many, many populations. We have phyllopatry in eels, one population, but everything else is in the, in the middle, just about. We've got the two extremes. In the middle, I, I'm suggesting that fronts might play a role in, in phyllopatry. Do you find that argument one that's uh, plausible? Yeah, I think. But then, <laughs> yeah, it would be. But, but, uh, but <coughs> yeah. But are there are there techniques uh, that uh, do sort of uh, genetics techniques or others that uh, would address this issue in terms of uh, being able to come up with this continuum in population richness from eels at one extreme and salmon at the other extreme? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I. That, uh, what I feel that it's really a moving field, but, but to my, my own personal, I don't, I really think that is really for, I don't, I don't really uh, to, to say much about it, because I think there's so much going on there, so I'm a little afraid of being too away, that's not really my speciality, but, but, but yes, that's going on, and I think we're getting more and more information, can, it's a very interesting thing going on. Yeah. My final question is on, uh, sort of landscape ecology. I, I don't know the answer to most of these questions, so it's a dialogue we're having. Um, but landscape in uh, ecology and terrestrial systems uh, might have some analogies for your frontal features. Yeah, I see, I see the, the I personally I feel that there's just a lot of, lot of things to, I can can see the same pictures in terrestrial ecology. The ecological aspects, I find really good. I also try to explain how, how devoted, so to say, how strict a uh, niche or given habits or given habitat. We can illustrate it by a bird and wood, right? But, uh, that we have, we have these, these, uh, these tendencies that, that we have specific areas that put them into niche. That's something really good about in terrestrial. And then, in fact, how to, to lead people's attention to that. In fact, it's the same our players. Even when, when it seems so, so different from the environment. Okay, maybe I'll just close off with a comment. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that I found reading your body of work to be uh, very stimulating and, and, and interesting. And the key issue for me was your general conclusion of the universality of fronts with many different species, where I don't think that was generally recognized. Uh, before your work, or maybe even generally recognized now, because people haven't looked at the collective work. Mm -hmm. And I think it does open um, a window on this broader issue of the uh, of existence of its structure in the ocean. Yeah. Just in itself, it's, it's, the, it's the forest versus the river, or the forest versus the, the plains in our, in our landscape that I don't think we've all, at least, I haven't recognized so much. Um, and I guess I thank you for opening that window uh, for me taking it from kind of a narrow herring perspective to a multi-species global perspective. Okay. Good luck on the next questions. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And I now ask Professor Audrey Giffen Please. Hello. Um, um, it's a real treat to be in this situation. I never thought I would be on this side of the questioning. <laughs> it's
it's an honor and a pleasure, absolutely, to have been able to read all of the body of work again, because I've read them several times now over my career. Oh, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, and to see the synthesis as well, which was amazing. Um, and yes, we would like 30 copies of it for our new normal no, fish course, <laughs> because it really represented what would be of the, almost the perfect textbook. And so here are my questions, because the things that weren't in the textbook yeah, yeah. <laughs> are what I would like to focus on here. Yeah. And I know my, why I didn't. <laughs> good. There was no space for it. <laughs> all right, all right, that's a good excuse. But now, now, yeah. So, um, uh, you paint, um, a, you know, quite a, a convincing and a really um, complete set of ideas and concepts of all of that. But I have to ask, perhaps, um, where, where does predation fit in to all of these determining factors uh, in forming, say, the characteristics of the survivors and everything else? Where do they fit in with all the, the fronts? Yeah. Now, well, they fit into fronts, but, but uh, whether they, you know, there is a story of tradition. I know, there's <laughs> one. <laughs> there's only this one. But those that, that just tells the story that they just are there to, to, to do the trick, so to say, right? And you have to, you have to, if you can go, if you can work with the with, with growth, you can have the, because nearly you only have the characteristics of the survivors, then the rest is just something that do it, so to say. Show the lie. So the predators, that's a good question. People are working on predation, I'm not working so much on predation, and therefore it's not there. That's a simple. Uh, but, but of course, I will acknowledge that, uh, and especially all of you probably want to mention that I didn't go much into the modeling thing, that it's possible when we have all these, as a force, this has to, when it has to be uh, extended, so to say, you can, cannot avoid, I'm not really a modeler. But I really certainly think they are of good uh, use, and <laughs> and therefore uh, this to see the niches, to see this, to really to to keep that together, you need to have some mathematics. You need to 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 see how things are interlinked, and of course again, but it was also my research yeah. yeah. So so it is that uh, it is not so much as my thesis because I haven't done so much myself. Yes. Okay. But I, because it's not a review, that really has to acknowledge that there has to be a problem. Yeah. Do you think predators are keyed into the fronts? Or do you think that they just ram through the larvae and take off, take, take their pick anyway? But do you think that predators are cued into to larvae concentrated on fronts? Yeah, yeah. In fact, we have a study in then we had this, this that also look into the larger fish. In, as we simply see, even as a large ecosystem, this is very much my story, very much on the plankton, because it is a starting at the larval level. But taking this further on to the predators of larger, to the larger fish, and yes, we see them. We see them in some way, we are just the same for larger fish, and we still find some fish in some areas of the front. So, so of course, it's, it's, they are. We have probably not fronts of all over a lot of issues, not only the lab. No, of course, yeah. of course. Uh, um, so to go on with this a little more and go, like follow the predation a little bit and go into, when you talked about flexibility and adaptability yeah. of these larvae, and okay, how do we know that they were flexible and it's not just that the predators took out the ones that we didn't see? How can we tell? that the predators didn't create the larvae and rather than the larvae being adaptable to a situation. How would we be able to know that? Mm, yeah, that's also where the next story comes in. They have to really look at what are they doing? So how can they, how things are they? That's also why, and so some of my students try to see how does it, uh, when we really look at the lab, how can I see this? Their behavior, or, or then okay, then I in better situation to interpret the findings from the feed, which is basically kind of how people are now, who did they grow, how did they get the feed. But mainly the adaptability, I see it mostly as, 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 as the, 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 the 
actual behavioral changes that they can do. That's yeah. what I also look into. And that's why I say, okay, it's obvious, it's not also, this, uh, this mercy of, 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 of the nature. It can't do something. That is something to do about the flexibility within a niche, right? When you have a niche, it does kind of temperature from here to there, but, but, but there are some flexibility in the system. Ah, not that with temperature, but, 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 but with other, other dimensions, there are some, they can, they can accept, accept to this level because they are able to adapt to it, right? If you take a, the axis to that dimension, you take it as a bit for the, for the, uh, for the, the way they are adapted to given, given the break entity. Okay, this is an initial way where, where can this adapt by changing around? And when, when, where do we then find the curve of, 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 of where is the optimum and where is the limits? Then the limits will be a little more, more blurred out or more gradual. Okay. Um, do you think they're actually adaptable and flexible on the individuals? Because we very rarely get to observe in the lab what an individual does over a range of of things, of, of conditions. You know, if you give more food suddenly and then take away food suddenly, it's hard to follow an individual over those things. But then, then how would we ever do that in the field? Yeah. No, but in the map, I wouldn't do the algae, but that's a kind of assumption in my body that, and I think, I also need, I don't follow one single individual. I want one single individual in one minute, and then there often will be another one. Yeah, yeah. But I take that as a kind of sequence. So, so in some way, I say, okay, this is a single individual that do this. So, so in that context, I think they are quite flexible. I mean, they, they can do this. They can that group of that yeah, group of in some way, it also, that of course, it's, it's very simple. We also, Thomas and I, we did this paper many years ago, just showing that they will uh, react in great entities. It's very simple and so intuitively. Uh, why food shouldn't they? But, but we need to have this in mind throughout the scientific world because then we knew from agriculture from literature that, that people are really as a thought they could do as a very simplistic sort of thing, very sophisticated, and we are not really uh, very, very complicated, but just writing that thought and how they are making, okay, why? Well, there's no training, uh, I had to do something to it. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I always, one of the things I already always admired about your laboratory studies was that you were one of the real champions of fish larvae or, um, or organisms and they have a range of behaviors and they can yeah, do yeah. things, they weren't just yeah. unformed fish. Yeah. Well, I always thought you were always my hero for that. <laughs> you know? and, and, but it's really actually an incredibly important thing that they yeah, can, yeah. can do these things. Yeah, yeah, all those, all those are awesome <laughs> researchers because that's very important to, 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 to know when we, we don't uh, over interpret or misinterpret findings, right? Because, yeah. because that's again the traditional one, or that's just with our team, yeah, something like that. They interpret something about, about predators, they can't, also the simple one is, is the one that they say, okay, if you can't live with this, uh, with this uh, level, they can't live with this, because they simply say, okay, we have measured what they did at this high level. So it will not be possible that this is no label, but okay, it's not a standard fish lab, it will change its behavior. That's okay, it will adapt to that out there. Right. Yeah, and also the species differences as well, what you find in one species. Yeah, yeah, then, then, then it's, uh, yeah. So this allows me to get back to modeling, because yeah. this is the whole question that I had, or the I thing I couldn't figure modeling. out, um, is because much of the stuff that you did in, in the lab was has been really fundamental in per parameterizing the IBMs, the individual based yeah, yeah. modeling. I mean, it's been really fundamental, and that is a huge contribution. Or and so, please, could you speak closer to Sorry, uh, it's been a huge contribution. And so, you've enabled the development of all these larval IBMs, yeah. and now they've kind of gone through their cycle, and I'm sort of wondering why they never appear, why you never, not took them up because you're not a modeler, but why they haven't kind of appeared in, in forming your future hypotheses and, and work. Yeah. Kind of never well, taken them back have, in again. I have, but, but I think okay. I was, I was carried away by film. <laughs> it didn't work. Okay. In some way, I'll come back to all that work. 
this last time, you know, we go around, and I, I really appreciate the work that's all in, in your group and what's, you know, what's done, and uh, absolutely, I, I'm aware of it, and, 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 and well, perhaps you missed on the top, and I didn't describe it that much, it's mostly, and I said, okay, it was because of space, but of course it would have been space, but it's mostly that, that uh, when I tell the story, I felt that I opened up a very interesting, but a kind of box, you know, open up a box, and then you need to tell it more, 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 and then, then I, I was thinking uh, yeah. my conservation was not in the journey for, for me as a researcher. I appreciate the work and I'm inspired by But I can, mm, I have an advantage here because we're in a conversation and I can ask you, so how has it kind of fed back in that kind of development of, of being able to model larvae? How, how does it feed back into your field work and, and the kind of questions that you're pursuing in the field? Well, this is what I have given an example. This is about the vertical path, which is then less really inspiring, and also made me as well interpreting the fairly simple observations. We are able to do it. Not that easy to make vertical certification of fish farm distribution and all the things through plankton, but 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 but, but the, the the attention about predator predator presence and and and, and light levels and all interaction and so. What has been described there is really something that I have in mind when, when kind of conceptually interpreting the findings so you see it in my list, uh, I don't know, but, but it is there, yes. yes. And, and I would also like to follow up the fact that was, that there was a immunity to so I don't really was to care if that was true, but, but uh, there has been some ideas, yeah. So now people are going even further and linking the IBMs to, well, the biophysical coupled yeah, yeah. Modeling where they're you know drift models and then yeah. the larvae are uh, are well, developing yeah, through yeah, them. So the yeah, we have the yeah. going on now. Yes, so and so where do you think that should go next? I mean, what should be added in? They've got people will talk about particles as if they were larvae, yeah, and yeah. the models are becoming so realistic in a way, and um, the sophistication of yeah. of the information about the larvae. Where should they be going next with that? I think there are two things that, that, that we, have, we have the models still need to be improved by the mission <laughs> right? To incorporate those because there's so much about this one of the residual currents and the more, more uh, those that go down to the deep, that's obvious in the, in the, in the, in the, in the casualties are 5,000 kilometers, 5,000 meters to the bottom. And, so, and then they use all these models that are very much weak because they have to move all these water, but we are interested in an hour. Uh, about 200 meters, so, so, uh, so in that context we need to be sure that this is incorporated in the models. But the other thing is also that, uh, and that really is fine, I'm right in the middle of the final paragraph of my uh, complaint about it is in the synthesis. What I really have perspective is where I see, and I think this is also in Norway going on, is about whether they have more active behavior. I think it's really encouraging. I think also that it's my feeling that is something I have not really been open to it because I think, okay, it's nothing, but, but I am convinced of these studies and I think this is the way forward. That is something really that, that, that was kind of, okay, with this is possible, then everything, then by using many things, falls into place. Because I still very much believe in all this, I should say, but, but we need that if they have quite such a market influence on their own drift direction, that will be fantastic. And I think they have. Through their migration behavior. Yeah, their yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is, a, for example, they can orient themselves after uh, the direction of light. That is really interesting, right? Uh -huh. It's not light in itself, but with, as it was, the well and sun. It's about just some, some marking and things. And that is something also that we think also, with that the modern source of us also, they can't be to different things in because they want. So, so this, I think, would be. At least as I see this fantastic interesting to follow and be part of this. So, mm, so where should a young person go when they if they were starting out wanting to study fish larvae? Should they start at the mesoscale end? Should they start at the laboratory end? Should they go in for behavior, neural development, and sensory what they stuff? For? <laughs> Does it depend on whether they're, they're seasick or not? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't think everything is for.
for the countries in that sense. I think I, I, I think myself, Iron Way has been quite fruitful to be both hands. And then we restrict, restrict ourselves, but, but uh, to be both in the lab and the field, that is something beneficial for scientists. To, to, to be, because they have this different thing, or we look into a tank and they talk to the other ship, it's different. But, but I think the interpretation uh, in the field is better if you know something from a lab and uh, with vice versa, that's a good thing. So, so, so uh, yeah, I'm confined. You did it kind of sequentially. You did all your lab stuff, and then now you're in all yeah, the field. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How? I mean, but then you do it. Uh, should we do it in parallel? Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. You know, we have some new fantastic facilities here at DTU, uh, and there will be a new fantastic lab, wet labs. So. I'm going to do some experiments. Okay, well that leads us, because one of the things I did want to ask you is what you thought, technology-wise or approach-wise, and the methodologies, what do you think have been the biggest advances that you've seen over, you know, since the 80s, since the early 80s? And so what have made the biggest differences in the way we look at larvae and the way maybe that your uh, hypotheses have developed, the way your work has developed? I mean, we started out watching a larvae. Yeah. Yeah, but isn't it? Uh, I don't think we have kind of pattern and shift or anything. That that's mostly kind of progressing more and more information, accumulating. Thing. Mm -hmm. The most thing I think those two things I, I mentioned that the further uh, as new I think much new will happen on the basis of this possibilities to go into subpopulation structure by genetics and this direction I think. I don't know about that, sorry. but that's, that is the unique. Else, it's, it's there are not so many new things. Okay. Mm. What do you see? I don't know. I mean, I, I think sometimes the ability to manipulate um, food quality and so to look at larvae and different nutritional conditions. Uh, that's that's more agriculture. Well, well, it affects their behavior. If fatty yeah, acids yeah, it affect some, brain yeah. development. And if we can put those together, I guess. Um, uh, we can also observe a lot more behaviors than we used to, I guess. Yeah, the video. Oh, okay. yeah. This video I made mean, right now, we can do it with a very complicated. It's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. So here's something that, uh, that uh, we were talking about you last night. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, so do you think that any of the things that we f are finding now with new equipment and new capabilities of data processing and stuff, do you think that any of those are going to overturn stuff that we learned earlier? Um, Henrik has specifically mentioned the ability to sample, the resolution of our sampling in the field has gotten much better. Does that, and, and our ability to see things in the lab has gotten much better. Do you think that ch might change what we understand about fish movie? It Could it improve it, but will it also change it? No, I so that. I don't see it as such. So within the of course, it will be. I it will be possible to do more to our, our hypothesis. For example, if we had a fantastic video thing that could show where the lava is in the field, or the big lakes are in the field, or by having a fantastic equipment down the water column. But but basically, these are not the methods. I think it's more the findings than the methods. There might be some breakthrough in findings. But the methods, I'm a little, I think it's because I've been, I don't know whether I've been disappointed, <laughs> but I have seen kind of experience, my experience is that there's that, that, not that much progress in this matter, because it is, there are some huge constraints on the experimental side, because it is, we restrict the volume, we, we can't do anything much to the, we have these walls and a lot of that, and then in the, in the field, we have these this, uh, restrictions of the huge size and the stormy weather and all that. And then, uh, We're stuck between. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think no, we're not, uh, I'm not taking it positive, but, 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 but I don't see so much as we change. In some ways, more than I mean, we can do much more, but that's especially perhaps by, by not. Uh, 
focusing so much about new things and so much. But more to, to really to go out and make the, the, the research high season bigger. And all too much kind of do what we used to do, I don't know really, but, but I, I, I think that there was a period where we had much more high thesis. Uh, there might be some other structure of our universities over there that makes it a little more difficult to to go out and say, okay, I have a good idea, that's enough, so now go for it. Yeah, in that world where we all have all the funding that we want to do. But I, I guess I would um, uh, propose to you that uh, um, our ability, our uncertainties about fish larvae perhaps are, have been reduced because our sampling gear is better, or the resolution of the sampling is better, and in the lab we've got much more reliable, we can count on certain survival. We're not sort of desperately trying to keep them Alive to the end of ex an experiment. No, no, we we desperately try. Oh well, <laughs> 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 I mean, we're, we're good at it. You know? But uh, but in some ways, the fact that we can replicate things much more reliably yeah, yeah. now. Oh, I'm also optimistic. It's not to be pessimistic. So it's okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, yes. Ooh. I did have. I think. Um, Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the otoliths. Mm. <laughs> because I have to ask you about otoliths. Yeah. And I, I have been disappointed if you have. <laughs> you have been? You have been I, I, I have been disappointed if you have. Okay, okay. So, um, why aren't they used more? And why are they not more uh, a part of larval fish work, I guess? People are fine. Oh. By your study. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is a uh, that the, uh, I told her that there is alternating rings, nice rings, that, that usually we interpret them as daily and then it's easy to, to interpret it as, as, as age and growth and so on. But, but, uh, but uh, Alden made a study where she proved that it, we cannot believe that 100%. And then people, oh, we have to, uh, to be very sure that it's daily before we, we dance and we sell it. Uh, Is that right? I, I think enough people have proved, in, at least in cod and, uh, and many other species, that they uh, are very useful and even in uh, herring. I agree. Like that's not the big I also think that I do. I don't know. Now we have just finished the uh, start on, on the E, e uh, oscillates. That was a strange that uh, Daniel is here and PhD and E. Studies that 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 this has been that was a uh, very minor study from 20 years ago and so 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 that was kind of wow that should be a fantastic opportunity to start there so 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 that we we hope really to improve uh, and that's why I take up the Aslis as often I can. There the the information from Odalis and of course the science uh, structure has has been fueling this kind of renewed interest in um, growth mortality hypothesis, you know. Yeah. Big, well, some of it is bigger is better, and some of it is, of course, a growth rate selective mortality and, yeah. and all of this. Yet there are a lot of um, um, studies that show that those faster growers aren't always the survivors. There are some situations where slower growth is advantageous. And when you talk about size selective survival or or you know faster growing, you don't couch it in the growth mortality hypothesis kind of scenario. And I was kind of wondering how you relate your work to to the to that the work that the Japanese are doing so much of and uh, all of that. I think that we in the study we in fact did some calculations for it made what So yeah. So I consider that if we have these growth differences, then it will lead to this kind of mortality. Mm. That's right. As far as I remember, that was the first time. The first time was again with a lot of assumptions and there were not a lot of things. But but that was quite so. So we could prove that with this right now the graph shows the flat and red line that this this could be uh, translated into quite huge mortality. But yes, the right could do more. 
And, and in other species and in your other situations as well, do you think that you're seeing a, a lot? Do you think it's a general, a widespread, that that's no, all yeah, that's, that's also why I felt a little bit that you also said, okay, the, the has been done on the other side. But I don't think that we really did the same study as others showing this. I think that was not okay. That is already done. As in fact, I think that, that people need to do that if we are in this case, we can find the first observation of, 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 of Slow growers die out of this intensity that in the population it, it is a, a, a likelihood that, that we have the slow growers die out. We need to do it many places to, to start with. <laughs> start is okay, there's something about it. So, so in that context, yes, we found it. It might be found otherwise, it might be kind of for how many percent of the time will it be this way. So, 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 yes. so then why don't you do it more often in your other places as well? Why did you just Because it's very, very difficult. <laughs> 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 okay. Because you have come to you know, come back. Mostly it's very difficult to have a kind of two times. That was this big life for project. And also if I had a vicious, uh, because then we had planned these four cruises. But that's really a big thing. Right? Well, uh, so, so, so to be able to that, to have a, a smaller population, I go back and make another thing. We have to have this time passing, right? So we need to be good thing and yeah. be that thing. And this is a this is some job to be sent some funding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um so why don't people do it for eel? Because presumably for the three eel larvae that you find along the way, presumably you could go back and you know, along the track. Yeah. And why are more people not doing that, for example, for eel? It would seem the perfect kind of study that you could... Uh, which which study? Well, the, the, to sample a population over and over and look at survival. Oh, no, well, no, yeah. Uh, or is that what's again, going because on? It's very, <laughs> because it's again very complicated. To establish this cruise, as of now it's more the, the 2014, as a later cruise in the life described this, this is... But, but that really showed how, how much it takes to, to be the only ones. I didn't think could, could have been twice. In fact, we covered so big an area so we could have mixed it. But anyhow, again, it's a big task. It really needs a very strong support to be able to, 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 to handle this. Because in the North Sea, could, that is in fact easier as a more restricted area. It is diff, the most difficult in many aspects. Because this huge area would be very difficult. But what we, what we, 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 uh, it was Cliff who was looking into, right? Well, the, then, the, no, the selective survival. No, if, selective you have, oh, if you've got a conveyor belt of larvae coming yeah, across yeah. while you're not but looking at it. It's uh, so big in the area to cover. But I think when, especially models could, could, could help us to, to see whether you get a restricted, even when it looks very dispersive, our idea is still that they are. The constraints in the lower cells. Yeah, yeah. Cells. So, so we we improve, and we really have models that can tell us that this this will be uh, we will have sampling in the same spot. And of course, it would be fantastic. <laughs> that we can you, you know how the patch done is where the difficulties, but that's because we didn't understand the process. We saw that there are parachutes. We can a parachute is fishing, then we are in the same patch, right? But it isn't because it would not cover the full uh, information about the topography. So. We need some more detailed ones that perhaps our doctors, models can pro uh, provide us when it comes from. So you see, you, you have to uh, seed a, a cell with a yeah, continuous, some three continuous three cell. Three cell. Three three cell. Three. I want to have the three dimensional thing going on and I can know where to say to and how to do this. I think you just want to go out there and put a big plastic curtain around it. Yeah, and let it fall and it would be much easier, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So, music cross one, yeah. <laughs> so you could just have your floating music cross got that. That would solve a lot of problems. Um, most people I know who work on fish larvae, or even adult fish, they tend to move from fish they know to the next kind of fish that's a little bit similar and yeah. transfer some of those. And you were very, you know, you work very comfortably with all of these fish. And even when you work the, the stuff from the from uh, the Pacific, it's or, or from the Indian oh, Ocean. Yeah. They're, they're they're normal fish larvae. You know what to expect. But this leap to eels, the eel larvae are so. I mean, they don't. They're not feeding. <laughs> you know, so all of your 
uh, all of the work that you've done in understanding how, f how fish larvae feed yeah. for a while is, is not working, doesn't have any relevance. So no, how did you make that leap? That's not a way that you don't want to be challenged at the time, right? So you take out the big, big time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's also about a writer that I don't know whether it's, 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 there's some, you know, some, what's called chances, something happens and then nobody can be, you can be. That was something happening with Galaxy Expedition, that was this possibility. And then I was kind of, I don't know very well, wow, that was an interesting start, I wanted to follow up on that. Uh, but, but when, afterwards I can like, explain it as really I wanted to be challenged, right? That, that, that when you have this high piece about France, it has to work everywhere. But then, then, okay, take the worst one, go to Sarkasm, and then France say, yeah, yeah, that is, that's a, you know, okay, even when it was so, Spectacular, or special, then then has some common common aspects. And so what uh, we you, didn't, what we could didn't you do only the yield cycle. We also again again is focusing on on all the other fish that are out there. Okay. Hundred and sixteen species. Hundred and sixteen species. So so we 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 really challenge us really take it to okay. all species. So are you looking at the sargasso as a super big? Yeah. Try right there as a. Yeah, well, the, super the mother of all retention. Uh, and nursery and uh, retention yeah. area, sorting area. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I guess I was going to ask, what have you been able to transfer to this, to this new challenge from all that you've accumulated, you know, your expertise and everything? What have you been able to transfer over to yields? Because we can't do anything in the in the lab yet, or do you know some I think secrets? That was, that was, yeah. you know, I have to ask why I haven't I haven't been in the lab. I have been trying to handle this stupid heat lab yeah. because I was involved in a project, which was this the really thing? project from many years ago. So. Yeah. And that was my idea. Why I want to go to lab? Why do I then you know, combine the field? That mm. field for lab. Okay, I take the heat lab to so lab, but we still do feet, and I'm very much so we're only jock sack. So okay. It's like it's jock sack lab, so. so this is five years on. Why aren't they feeding yet? Uh, <laughs> it's not my thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I've come to the questions that I had uh, prepared for, for this. And um, I just want to thank you again for the thank opportunity. You. Thank you very much.